What is going on guys welcome back to another video i hope you are having an amazing day and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at a first android q beta gsi yes android q beta from the pixel to xl has been now made into a gsi which can be flashed on any kind of triple enabled device and also it does boot on the android oreo vendors too which is just a bit weird so for example some of the devices which will be moto x4 or the nokia x6 or 6x i don't know what's the model number is but they do work on oreo vendors but right now as you can see this is my poco phone f1 and this is one of the best devices which can actually handle this thing because actually this is the first build and this is not a sga size so this doesn't actually require a patch yes the awesome developer known as irfan abedi which is the same one who actually ported auction os miui one ui without patches so extremely talented developer and he has also made this possible within a day which is again amazing so again i have tried this thing on my redmi note 5 pro 2 uh, literally not the best thing to try on as you can see the brightness is just broken then again the launcher just uh, doesn't work at all this thing is not stable but yeah and i also tried it on my redmi note 4 as you can see the launcher stays up and it's pretty stable for the performance that this chip offers but then again poco phone f1 has the most stable build over here so for example let's just fire it up as you can see this is the lock screen and yes android q would be announcing customization for the lock screen right now it doesn't have any kind of option but i have enabled it through a adb command and it just looks awesome like this text one really looks clean but let's just unlock this is your normal home screen just like the pixel 2 one and then there are many youtubers right now even like more than 100k subscribers who have made installations of these things and they say it's stable it's just that you don't have any security or even like connect to the secured wi-fi otherwise is just stable well that's actually completely false just don't trust anyone this thing is not stable this is like one of the first betas you won't be getting android q stable until like august when the all six betas have been conducted and then you will get a stable build just don't trust anyone these things are extremely highly for testing there is no biometric security over here you can't even put a pattern lock on this thing then again you can't even connect to secured wi-fi so for example i mean let's just try to connect to my wi-fi here you go put in the password and it doesn't even obtain the ip address so if i just uh, go to my s10 and just uh, give it my wi-fi and then hotspot from it just uh, directing through it there you go galaxy s10 plus let's just connect it open wi-fi just connects perfectly then again the camera is just completely broken on all the builds it's not just that the gcam doesn't work but there you go there are the new permissions it looks a bit like ios but yeah works fine but as you can see the gcam just stays like that black screen and the camera just doesn't work on any kind of app like even if you go to open camera no yeah that's also an issue if you install anything the rom does actually go through a soft reset on every single reboot that's also one another issue and uh, some of the guys are saying that this is stable then again none of the google apps actually work like for example if you go to the play store uh, it just won't work even the chrome also some of the stock apps which are also google apps like phone app they do work but take like whole hour to open up like there you go finally aosp apps such as like messages app open just fine then again settings app no issues at all pretty fast but then again let us take a look at the features as we have already talked about the bugs so for example all the apps just pretty much stay the same they don't get a complete layout change cause companies go through two year upgrade plan for example a7 and s9 were the same iphone x and 10s are the same then again same with the ui samsung experience just stayed same for two years then again we have one ui then again pi and q would be the same then again r would be different so yeah I have actually also enabled the newer gestures in Android Q, which is not a standard feature. You do get your nav bar and the swipe up on home button. But there are some new gestures arrived with Android Q, which I have enabled with again ADB. So for example, if I just open any kind of app like settings app, if I just go inside it, again, if I just go inside any kind of another tab like adaptive battery. Now, if I just want to go back, either I could touch this back button just like on iPhones, but I can't swipe back like iPhone. So I can just swipe like this. Yeah, that's the back button. You have to just swipe the pill to the left. And then again, if I just want to quickly switch between the apps, just like before, I can just drag like this. There is no app present right now. So let's just open just a couple of things like clock. Even the clock takes some time. Why? But I can just quickly switch between them as you can see. Yep, it's just glitched out. Uh, yeah, but I guess my point is clear. You can just quickly switch between apps like this just like in Android Pie. And then even if you want the quick setting panel just anywhere, just swipe down on it and there you go. You can just quickly bring that thing down, which is pretty great. If you just do it slower, it will just go to the home. 
But in other words, the UI is just pretty much the same. This is like the first cube beta. You do get emergency button over here and also screenshot as this is a beta. There is no developer preview. This is the first open release. Then again, if you just go to the wallpapers and stuff, you all get the pixel to wallpapers. So if you open any kind of live wallpaper, there you go, you get a newer UI. So for example, you can explore the place via Chrome or Google Maps. Then again, you can just set the wallpaper directly, which is pretty cool again. Then again, if you just again go to the settings, the settings UI do get a bit of upgrade. As you can see, you have your quick suggestions over here. Then I can finish setting up your pixel, which won't finish. Then again, you have search button, also your account, just like one UI, which is a bit weird. Then again, if you scroll down, pretty much normal stuff. Even if you go to the display, there is nothing been added hugely over here. You have your privacy settings, which has been dissected from the security, which is again great. Security options are just now getting bloated and bloated. They have certificates, security patches, biometrics. So app permissions and normal stuff should be over here, which is again pretty great. And also now digital well-being is being embedded inside the launchers, which is pretty great. I don't have a whole idea on it, so not going to talk a lot. But again, it just takes a whole lot to load. If you go to system, advanced, developer options, there are pretty updated things over here, especially for the Pixel devices. But if you just scroll down, you have theming. Now theming is not a lot over here. If you go to the accent colors, you get black, but it's not like complete dark UI. Then again, you have green, purple. You also have headline or body font, which is kind of dumb font to be honest. It's just preview thingies. Then again, you have icon shape like squarical, device default, tear drop. Now this again depends on your vendor. If your vendor supports circle or square, it just depends. For me, it's just circle cause of the superior OS vendor. But if we just come back to the about phone section, again, Android version Q, you have QPP1 and also the Easter egg has not been yet replaced. This is like a much older version of Android Pie, nothing else. And then let's just talk about the installation. Now, first of all, I'm warning you guys, this is just for testing. You can't use this as a daily driver. Yes, networking does work, but Volti is just completely broken on most of the devices. Like even Redmi Note 4 has networking working, but Volti completely broken. So again, just use this at your own risk and installing this might not take a while or just much of brainstorming, but it's quite complicated. So I need you guys to have a bit of a knowledge of installing a custom ROM. So let's just begin. First of all, you have to install a custom recovery. Once the device has been powered off, just hold on your power and volume up at the same time until the boot logo shows. Then again, just let go the buttons. There you go, we are into the top recovery. Then go to wipe, advanced wipe, dial with cache system data. Just swipe to wipe. Now, once you go to the home, remember that if you have a Snapdragon 800 series phone, the phone is going to encrypt itself no matter what you do. Android Q has not been rooted yet. Yes, it has been rooted on Pixel 2 and this is a Pixel 2 base, but you can't actually root this or decrypt this. So if you have a Snapdragon 600 or 400 series with a treble phone, no issues at all. But for this, you have to factory reset completely. So again, going to the install. Now for the rescue over here, unlike Android P, which Moki ROM and much of the other ROMs would actually support, over here, Superior OS has the best vendor for almost all devices booting. Again, you can use Mac AOSP vendor, then again, Pixel Experience CAF vendors are pretty good. Actually, my Redmi Note 4 is running a PE CAF version, but for most of the devices like Redmi Note 5 Pro or the Pocophone F1, Superior OS just boots it perfectly. So, Superior OS, install the custom ROM. Now, the custom ROM that you are installing should be treble supported. That means after installing system image unconditionally, it should also install vendor image. There you go, the ROM has been successfully installed. As you can see, it has also installed the vendor. Then I can just go to home, go to wipe again, advanced wipe, just wipe the system so that our folder is completely clear for the Android Q. Go to install, install image, and then again you have to extract the zip of QA only or QAB partition according to your phone. And then just select the IMG system image, confirm to flash. Once Android Q has been flashed, it doesn't take a long. Just go to mount and mount everything like vendor and system must be mounted at all cost. Then just go to install and select permissiver, add more zips, fix zygote. I seriously don't know what it really does. I have to actually ask the developer for it, but just confirm flash. And finally we are done. So reboot system, do not install, wait for a bit. There you go, the Google logo and Android Q must be booting in three to five minutes. Yes, I know this is a AOSP ROM, but still takes a whole lot of time cause of some security issues, but it must be booting in a while. 
and just after one to two minutes the gsm must have been booted android beta program okay let me just adjust the brightness right there and yeah that's pretty much it on how you can install android cube beta literally the first gsi on your treble enabled phone i hope you guys enjoyed if you want more videos on the android cube beta which i would be making soon just subscribe down there and again i would be really appreciating if you share my videos like channel is not going through the best time right now i have been not getting any kind of recommendation from youtube so it would be a large help to me if i have been benefited you in any ways and just thanks for watching see you in the next one peace